is that these animals can multiply asexually. Right here, you remember? Here, asexual reproduction by buddy. You remember that? I said that. But in these animals, what they can do, they cut themselves longitudinally themselves, and then each half grows to become a flower animal. Or, that's called longitudinal fission, or they can do petal lacerations. They cut themselves from here, so this one floats away and sits on the uh, bottom of the ocean. And this one, the remaining of the bottom, will grow back and becomes a uh, sea anemone. Okay. So pretty much uh, uh, two, uh, two types of asexual reproduction. Uh, Metridium is the name of the uh, genus we have in the lab. We have uh, Metridium in the lab for you guys, so I will ask that sometimes. What is the name of the genus, Metridium? Uh, pharynx or gullet present, that's pretty much what this is. Right here is your pharynx or gullet. Right here, all of this is pharynx or gullet, and I will talk about that here in a minute. Uh, the tube enemies and thorny corals, uh, gastrovascular cavity has septa, there are six septa. I'd like you to know that term, six complete septa. I will talk about it in a minute. Mesovia has amoeboid cells, and here they are. So if you, <coughs> Let's look at this animal in the cross section. You cut the animal in the cross <laughs> section. So this is your pharynx or gullet. I'll talk about that. And here are, is a complete septum. One, two, it means all the way from epidermis of the animal to the pharynx. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they call it six uh, complete septa. And then in between the complete septum, right here, between the complete septum, they have the tertiary septum, so quaternary or secondary uh, septum. I'm not too crazy about those, but you should know they have six complete septum. And here are their tentacles. The flower, the, these tentacles can be beautiful, bright yellow, bright purple, bright orange, beautiful colors. Uh, I've seen them in Steinart uh, Aquarium in San Francisco. Uh, Monterey Aquarium does not mean too much of them. Once in a while, they have some nice, beautiful uh, sea animals, the flower animal. And of course, this is a pharynx gullet. I talked about that. And then the nematocyst, the nidocytes are right here in the tertiary, secondary, or uh, ostia is the opening in this area, and gonads are right here. It's not too many, again, not too many structures I would like to know. Just know, and make sure you know your um, tentacles right here for the lab purposes, the gullet or pharynx right here, complete septum right here, and in between, these are all incomplete septum. These are all incomplete septum right here. Okay, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, the pedal disc, the bottom of the animal right here is called pedal disc. That's pretty much it. That's all. All right. And then, uh, the, uh, you know, these animals, of course, the animals we have in the lab, they do not make corals, but same class. They are in the same class, different species. I'll give you some uh, group of them that they do. They sit on the bottom of the ocean, and then they make calcium carbonate. And that's what you have in the lab, corals. Corals, when they make calcium carbonate here and here, and that's what the picture I'm showing you guys, right here, these are all calcium carbonate, and they make the reef. And what a reef is, is the bottom of the ocean that is covered with these guys. And of course, this could be a, a ha living habitat for many, 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 many different species. Okay, for fishes, for algae, for you name it. Uh, so that's what, uh, and here are the tentacles, and they make, uh, these guys are making calcium carbonate deposit. We don't have that slide, so that's in anthozoa? That is anthozoa, it is in your textbook. So yes, um, I, you know, just, just make sure you know corals belong to this class, class anthozoa. And then uh, sometimes, uh, over the years, students ask, uh, how, how is the coral being made? Well, right here. This is the animal that makes the coral. 
of, of course, different species than what we have in the lab, different, uh, different uh, sea animals. Okay, the next phylum is uh, the last phylum we are going to study, that is radial symmetry animal. So from then on, the rest of semester, we will study bilateral symmetry animals. These are radial symmetry animals, radial symmetry animals. And the C again, uh, what is uh, 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 Monaco here? Monaco, C is silent, Monaco. Kind of I, I don't know who is here, who is not. You believe it or not. One day, one day you don't show up, it's here. Yeah. If you're not here, raise your hand. Yeah. I, I, you don't have to. I mean, that's, here. <laughs> that's a gift card, David. Okay. So, uh, ten or four, uh, and one, one species I gave you, and we do have it in the lab. That's the name of the genus, uh, Pleurobrachia. Pleurobrachia is the name of the genus you have in the lab. And then, uh, comb jelly or sea walnut, a walnut, that's what they call them, comb jelly, because they look like they have combs right here, rows of combs, that's what they call them, comb jelly, okay? And then they're very small. They're, they never get to be huge, like scryptozoid. Okay, uh, tenophores resembles the cnidarians because uh, radial symmetry. They're similar to cnidarians. Uh, they are. Uh, they have aboral oral axis. Yes, and uh, they They have a very well developed mesoglial layer. No ciliary cavity, and they have nerve plexus, just like cnidarians. Okay. Oh, there's one more. Lack of organ system, of course. They do not have any organs. Uh, they have eight rows of combs, like plates, uh, of cilia used for locomotion, and that's pretty much what they got the name of. Then, why, the question is, why I'm here, they, you did not place these, the cnidarian, the comb jellyfish, with cnidarian in the same phylum. So what are the differences? Right here are the differences. Phylum tenophora, why they're different? Number one, they do not have nematocysts, the most important structure. Inside of the nidocytes, there's no nematocysts. Okay, so they have distinct muscle cells. Remember, cnidarians do not have distinct muscle cells like you and I. They have muscle fibers. Okay, so they have distinct muscle cells. They have complexes. And they have uh, no polymorphism or dimorphism. It means polyp medusa, polyp medusa stage. They do not have that. Or polymorphism like see uh, the Portuguese man of war. Portuguese man of war is polymorphism. They have three colonies inside of one organism. That's pretty much what polymorphism means. And then uh, they're never colonial. Yes, I talked about that, polymorphism. And uh, they have anal port. They do not have anus. But they have an opening on the aboral side called anal pore. They do have that too, which Nidarians did not have. And that should be it for the um, sponges and Nidarians. Let's go to AC on the animals. Is there any question? How does it resemble Nidarians in yeah, radial symmetry animal, right? Yeah. But if you go on the board, that's the, uh, the different types of colony. Oh, in the end. Yes, in, uh, in, in radial symmetry animals. Okay, are we good? Shall we start with uh, acylomid animals? At the end of acylomid animals, that's the end of the material for exam number three. Is that right? Are you guys following your syllabus? Or am I the only one who follows the syllabus? So our test will be next Thursday? Huh? Our test is next Thursday? I'm giving you an extension because of the plan area. We start the experiment today, so it is a Tuesday after. Damn. Huh? No. Yeah. So you, you have you know, time to look at all of the slides, all of the models, and do your experiment, and write your report, and take the quizzes. 
boy, Amir, you're demanding. My soccer coach is not that demanding. You are demanding. You should not scratch your hair. You should just keep studying. Um, top of Easy, yes? Uh, the, um, if, uh, there is a difference between, I should get up here and not sit down, um, longitudinal section. Okay, so you do have a um, gastrular stage. Is that right? This is all gastrular stage. And the gastrular stage, if you compare the schizocilus animals with enterocilus animals back to where we were before at the second exam material, but now, I, we are visiting the true definition of silo. I talked about it from beginning until now. But now, hopefully, you get it down. Okay, now you're going to be responsible for what is the difference between animals who are uh, uh, acylomates, pseudocylomates, and eosylomates. Okay, let's go over that. And if you don't understand it, uh, please ask me. I'm going to go slowly, walk slowly. Hopefully, you will um, get a good uh, grip of it. OK, so we are looking at the, gra uh, the uh, gas you look, cutting it either longitudinally or cross-section. Am I making some sense? So all of these diagrams are the cross-section of gas you look, and all of these diagrams are longitudinal cut of gas shield. Okay, so what happens, the animals that you studied at the beginning of semester, the animals who are schizocilus, okay, most likely they are like this type of animals. The enterocilus animals, they do the out-pocketing schizocilus animals, they split the cells, right, you remember that? So we are saying that schizocilus animals, except human, they are primitive animals on the evolution tree. Okay. So what happens here, if you look at the gut, right here is the gut. You remember that from the beginning of the semester? So the cross section, if I cut it like this, you will see it like that. Is that right? The cross section. So the gut came from where? This came from endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm. The yellow lining came from where? They came from endoderm. And then the epidermis came from what? We already forgot. Ectoderm. It came from ectoderm. Okay. In between, between the endoderm, between the gut and epidermis, there is a space. That space in acylomate animals is covered with cells that came from mesoderm. Do I make sense? Don't worry about the rest. Just, just focus on the acylomate animal. A in front of the word means what? Without. Without. Without, Without silom. So, Amir, these animals are acylomates. No. They do not have any silom. They have nothing to do with silom. Oh, don't you call this the gastrovascular cavity? Don't you call it sponge seal? No. Those terms do not qualify for the term sedum. They're diploblastic animals. This is triploplastic animals. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Do you remember that? Triploblastic animals. They do qualify for sedum. What am I saying? That these animals were the, the acylomate animals, your textbook and other books make a mistake and I do not like it, if you have a quiz question or exam question, they say these animals do not have coelom. No, they have coelom. They have a space. They have a space between, they have a space between endoderm, between, well, endoderm and ectoderm, between gut and epidermis, they have a space. However, in acylomate animals, that space is filled with mesoderm. I hope I'm making some sense. Do I make sense so far? Let's look at two other groups of animals. Hopefully that will make more sense, okay? 
So in pseudo, pseudo means what, guys? Something. False. It means false. Okay. So pseudo coelomate animals, you have again same thing. The endoderm comes from gut. Well, the gut comes from endoderm, and then epidermis comes from ectoderm. You all know that. And then the muscle layer right here, this is mesoderm, right? So mesoderm is not filling out all of that space. Are you comparing or not? This is not filling all, it's just filling a layer right here. So by definition, coelom, just the definition of coelom is the space between gut and epidermis. In acelomitic animals, that space is filled with cells. In pseudocelomid animals, there is a space. On the microscope, you will see it next exam. On the microscope, there is a space, fluid field space. It's not an empty space or like a lungs. You know what I'm talking about? There is a fluid field space between gut and epidermis, but it's not completely surrounded with, which you're gonna see next, next one, which is surrounded by one, one layer is endoderm, the other layer is mesoderm. That is pseudocelomate animals, and you will see it like brown worms. You will see it later on. Brown worms, um, disease they cause like uh, liver blindness. Okay, you will see some. Okay. Then what you have the uh, some uh, animals that are coelomate uh, animals, the schizocilus, like insects, like arthropods. They are schizocilus, but they are coelomate animals. They are not pseudocelomate animals. Okay? So what happens, you have the epidermis, you have the gut, gut came from endoderm, epidermis came from ectoderm, and then you have a mesoderm. Mesoderm forms a sac that inside of that sac is coelom, but all of that, in that space, fluid field space, is surrounded by mesoderm. So these are true coelomate animals. We call them eo coelomate animals, or coelomate. Eo in front of the word in these true coelomate. They are true coelomate animals. Why they are true coelomate animals? Because that space is surrounded completely by mesoderm. This space right here is surrounded by endoderm and mesoderm. What does coelom become? Huh? What is what? What is the importance of coelom? Coelom is Okay. Why do you biologists, zoologists, emphasize on coelom so much? And even the animals who do not have coelom, they put the word coelom somewhere in here. Well, coelom is significant as far as classification goes in the past. And they you now use they use DNA. So it is important to see where the coelom came from and how it was formed in a by schizocilus. Remember, we talked about schizocilus or enterocilus. More advanced animals, if you look at schizocilus and enterocilus, same thing, look at it, same thing. Space, the coelom. The coelom is same, the coelom is same. However, where did that come from? Okay, did it come from splitting? or did it come from out-pocketing? If it came from out-pocketing, then it is a more advanced animal. As far as evolution goes, as far as classification goes, all of that, zoologists were just used it and abused it and used it to do that part of their studies. In the past, of course. Nowadays, DNA is just taking over, which is other. Has good and bad. You, then, then you get rid of similarities between organisms sometimes. When two organisms, especially in case of protozoa, they're very much alike, then by base of DNA you put them in different files. Okay. Before they were alike, well, not this, this does not qualify for protozoa. 
Um, but nowadays, uh, they use both DNA and, of course, they use a lot of uh, embryology to classify organisms. Okay, I hope I answered your question. Um, what else? So, right here. Enter Silas, she's a Silas. At the end, you have the same thing. Uh, Pseudocilomate animals, you have a false space. Why is it false space? Because one side of one side of that space is endoderm and the other side is mesoderm. Here is a true space because on both sides it is mesoderm. True space. That is a true space. We human are eosilomate animals. We are eosilomate animals. We have true silom. Where around our heart. Our heart Actually, the muscles of the heart, the myocardium, comes from mesoderm, and there is a sac around the heart, pericardium, that comes also from mesoderm. And between pericardium and heart, there is a space, fluid field space. And that fluid field space is coelom in human. Okay. We do not have coelom from head to toe, and you will see that next group of animals, next exam, that some earthworm. You all, you all have seen the earth. They have sealum from head to toe. Not us. Okay, so let's move on. Here we go again. I'm beating the dead horse. Uh, here is a uh, here is a planaria, which in the lab you're uh, dealing with. You're doing your experiment with the planaria, and then if you cut it in cross section, there is a space right here. There is a space between epidermis and uh, between epidermis and gut, but that space is filled with, you, you should see it under a microscope in the lab. There is no empty space. It's all filled with, it's all filled with uh, mesoderm cells, cells from mesoderm. And pseudocinomid animals, of course, you have the epidermis, uh, you have epidermis, you have uh, the gut, and then there is a space in here, that space is filled with fluid, but one end of that space is with um, endoderm, the other there end with is with mesoderm. Eosilomate animals, which we are, are on our heart, we have a space. So the heart and the pericardium right here, that would be the space. Okay. So Earthworm is an example of eosilomate animals. Eosilomate, eosilomate, and eosilomate, whatever. Plans shown as a cross section of the process. Okay, and here we go. If you want to break it down uh, to what group has what, uh, how they, you know, of course you're not familiar with all of these animals, but remember, all of these animals, they do not have coelom at all. Sponges and cnidarians and tenophora. There is no, there is no coelom involved in these animals. They're pipoblastic. Animals that start having triploblastic, then we talk about them and say, okay, then what kind of coelom they have. So as semester goes along, you become more familiar with all of the species, and then you would you should know which species are acelomate and which species are pseudocelomate for the final exam, and um, which uh, species are eosilomate. Okay, the acelomid animals, introduction, let's go over them, some cephalization, some head. None of these animals you looked in the past, none of them had a head. Hydra, sea anemones, jellyfish, sponges. They didn't have a head, cephalization. That's what head means, cephalization. And bilateral symmetry. Platia mentis or flatworms are in this group, they have true organ now. First group of animals, you're seeing they have true organ. Remember, the Nidarians were the first group of animals that had nerve. Sponges didn't have nerve. So that's what I'm hoping you will uh, retain by the end of the semester as well. Protostome and spiral cleavage, I'm not too crazy about that. Simplest excretory, excretory and circuitry system. And then uh, mesoderm in the form of muscle fibers and mesenchyme uh, parenchyma. Uh, three phyla, Plantia mentis, that are ace, uh, that are acelomate, uh, Nemertia, and uh, Nathos Lumenulidia, which we will only talk about Plantia mentis. We will not talk about. We do not have specimen in these two for the lab purposes. 
that we just have the 20 elements. And I will not lecture. There is nothing I have to say about these two. Main characteristics, they are triploblastic, of course, bilateral symmetry, of course, uh, flat dorsal ventrally. I didn't bring any model today, but I will bring them on um, uh, Thursday. Is that right? I'm going to go over that. Uh, true muscles, right? They have true muscle cells. And then uh, incomplete digestive system. What does that mean? Uh, incomplete digestive system, it means the mouth and anus is in the same place. Like these guys. Well, these guys didn't have a digestive system. They just call it gastrovascular cavity, so on and so forth. But these guys, they have complete income. You and I have complete digestive system. How does that? We have a mouth, we have anus. Ours is complete digestive system. These guys, the mouth and anus is in the same place. So from where they eat, the waste material get out from the same place. Large, solid waste material comes from the same place. Uh, some have eye spots. You will see it in, uh, you saw it in uh, planaria. Okay, uh, uh, most are monaceous. You know, you're familiar with that term. And then uh, phylum platyhelminthes is the first phylum uh, which uh, they have parenchyma. Uh, let's go over those. Parenchyma is the name of the layer uh, which is between epidermis and the gut. It's called a parenchyma layer, just like you learn it in your liver, right? But same terminology. Between parenchyma, uh, between epidermis and um, between epidermis and gut is called parenchyma. Most monogenia are, are ectoparasites. They have ectoparasites, animals that are animals that are, they attach to the outside eye shell. Yeah, anyone that are outside of their uh, prey, their, their host. All trematodes and cestodes are endoparasitic, and you will learn all of those in direct and direct life cycle. Final host is vertebrate in most cases, and you will see that triploblastic, cnidarians are not. Uh, body fluid moves by muscular contraction, and I will talk about Okay, class level area, uh, your uh, Thursday quiz is all the way to class level area. Is there any question before that? Is that last slide? Is that last slide in the class? Did I go over last slide that? Right here. So the chimpoblastic animals, body fluid moves by muscular contraction. I will talk about that. Uh, we'll pick up right here on the third. Is that what Thursday means?